Changing Lanes, the official podcast of BMW. Welcome to this episode of Changing Lanes, the official podcast of BMW. My name's Jonathan. And my name is Sarah. And today on the podcast, we're talking about something that we've heard over and over and over again. It cuts straight to the chase. It gives us an instant emotion. We know exactly what it feels like. That's right. Today, we are talking about the BMW slogan, sheer driving pleasure, or Freude am Fahren, as it's known in Germany. It's been synonymous with the BMW driving experience for over a half a century. Yeah, but maybe you're wondering how this iconic slogan even came about and why it's more relevant today than ever. Mm. Well, everyone, you are in luck because today on the podcast, we will reveal those answers in a brief journey through BMW's history with this iconic slogan. So let's hop back in our time machine and go all the way back to 1917 to where this all began. Yes. Bloop, 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 bloop. We're back in 1917. <laughs> <laughs> and as we all know, the BMW logo, it's it's been an essential element in all of its advertising campaigns. I mean, the logo was first used as a symbol of recognition and differentiation in 1917, years before the BMW aircraft engine manufacturer would actually bring its first vehicle to market. But at that point, the company, it was still a long way away from a brand claim that could relay such a positive emotion like sheer driving pleasure. Yeah, so that means there was a logo, but no slogan yet. Exactly, exactly. Something was missing. But this all started to change in the 1930s. So with that little history lesson behind us, let's jump ahead in our time machine to then. Yeah, so in the mid-1930s, the German word Freude, which means joy or pleasure, that started to appear in BMW advertisements. So in 1936, there was a billboard for BMW cars and motorcycles, and it said in German, Kraft fahren muss Freude bereiten. And that mm. means driving should be a pleasure. And ads for car dealerships would emphasize the Freude und Nutzen, or pleasure and convenience of BMW vehicles. Exactly. And by the way, Sarah, your German is fantastic. Yes, I've been I've been rehearsing. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, practicing my ac Aussprache, my accent, pronunciation. You must exactly. emphasize every every letter. Yes, every letter, every letter. So things were starting to move in the right direction back then, but uh, there was, you know, even an ad for the six-cylinder BMW 326 Touring model, and it promised potential buyers doppelte Freude am Fahren, or double the driving pleasure. So, I mean, as you can see, the ad campaigns, they were using the word Freude, or joy, or pleasure, to connect that emotional feeling to the BMW brand. And things, you know, they were looking good for the sense of joy and pleasure in the mid-1930s. But, you know, after the Second World War, BMW, they adopted a less emotional approach. Yeah, that's right. So why don't we fast forward now to the 1950s, where the ad campaigns, they focused more on the features of the various BMW model series. Yeah. So ads for the large 501, 502 sedans and the 503 coupe targeted the status conscious buyer by saying, lots of people drive cars, the sophisticated drive of BMW. Mm, exactly. And yet another German lesson. Um, when you say BMW in English, it sounds like BMW, but in German, they say BMW. So the W is pronounced as a V. So I'm going to say that right now so we have a little bit of a German lesson in the forefront because we're going to go into how you pronounce it in German and in English very soon. Okay, thanks for that German lesson, <laughs> Jonathan. So going back to the history of the BMW or BMW slogan. <laughs> so sometimes the V8 models were promoted as Wagen von Welt, which means cars of the world, or for overseas export markets, Die Europäische Linie, which means the European line. Yes, exactly. So there was less focus on the actual slogan, but there was more focus on the highlights and the features of the cars. Yeah, that's right. 
Exactly. And with more focus on the features, still, BMW had a cheerful slogan in 1955 for the BMW Isetta, saying, Freude haben, Kosten sparen, BMW Isetta fahren, which translates to, a pleasure to drive, save money, drive a BMW Isetta. Yeah, Jonathan, just to remind everybody, we actually did an entire podcast about the Assetta. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, so everyone feel free to check out episode 19 of our Changing Lanes podcast in case you missed it. Okay, back to this episode. <laughs> cool. So with the Isetta, this is when Freude, or pleasure, started to reappear back into the BMW ads. But, you know, there was just still no push to create a brand-identifying slogan. The catchy, Mehr denn je, BMW, which translates to <laughs> More Than Ever, BMW, which rhymes beautifully in German, as you could hear, um, but it doesn't really translate in English. Um, and like I said before, the W in German is pronounced as a V, so the Mehr denn je, BMW, super catchy, but it would only appear sporadically and not so often. Yeah, there was another famous slogan, which was BMW, eine Klasse für sich, which means mm. BMW, a class of its own. And that was often used in the boilerplate of many company press releases. But, you know, still at that point, a real slogan that encompassed the brand as a whole, that was still missing. Yeah, exactly. All right. So from here... Let's hop back into our time machine and skip over just a few years. We're going to stomp off at the beginning of the 1960s. Yes, yeah, so this was when BMW accompanied the launch of its Neue Klasse, which means new class, with a marketing strategy that took a slightly different tack. So sporty, reliable, emotive. Now, these were the qualities that stood for BMW products from the very beginning and which were now to be the focus of product communication for the new mid-sized models. And then in 1964, there was an ad for the BMW 1800, which ended with the phrase, Aus Freude am Fahren, which means for sheer driving pleasure. And now this really struck a chord, and it had a great ring to it. And this same tagline started appearing more often in other ads as well, sometimes in the header, sometimes in the text, and then finally, it made its way right next to the logo. And in 1965, so just one year later, that's when BMW found the perfect slogan to fit the brand image. Yay, success. Woohoo. This logo was no longer alone. It had a slogan to tie it all together. Yes, indeed. It was a match made in heaven. Yay, perfect pairing. All right, so let's get back into our time machine and jump ahead a few more years forward to the 1970s. Now, this is when the further professionalization of the company's marketing, as well as the harmonization of its brand image, solidified. So in 1972, the word aus, at the beginning of the claim aus Freude am Fahren, that aus was cut. It mm -hmm. was a filler word like the or from, or a. Uh. And without it, the message could still be relayed and the emotion would stay the exact same or actually become stronger. So the official BMW slogan that we know of today was set in stone. Mm -hmm. And also, Jonathan, actually BMW Motorsport happened to be founded in the same year. And that marked a Further step, since this sub-brand serves a pilot function for its own independent corporate identity. And, you know, we actually talked about this in episode 21 of our podcast, Blue, Purple, Red, A History of the BMW Loco, for all of you who may want to check that one out in case you missed it. Okay, back to this podcast now. <laughs> I love how you know all of the podcast episodes by heart. Yes, of course. <laughs> All right, so let's bring us back to 1972, and there was yet another milestone for BMW. So 1972 was a huge year for the company. Now, the architecture of the new BMW high-rise building that was nicknamed four-cylinder due to its unique design, that was also there. So it's a perfect timing for the year that the Olympic Games were held in Munich. Yeah, so you could say that 1972 was a great year for BMW. Most definitely. And, you know, it didn't only resonate within Germany, but also worldwide. Mm. In 1972, when sheer driving pleasure became the company's slogan, its translation for export markets was also standardized. 
before this, many freely translated variations had been used, and, you know, some of them just didn't really sound right. <laughs> I know, right? I mean, there were some that were just like, ooh, it hurts a little bit. So, uh, for example, in English, it had been translated as BMW puts pleasure back into motoring. Hmm, that Ugh. doesn't really roll off the tongue, does Not it? Not at all. No, Not at all. very awkward. Yeah. Weird. Or they would say, for the joy of motoring. Okay. What does motoring even mean, you know? Uh, I don't know. I mean, at least it's a little bit better, but uh, <laughs> definitely not as good. <laughs> yeah, no, it sounds forced. It sounds so unnatural. And like you said, it doesn't mm-hmm. roll off the tongue. And, you know, even in French and in Spanish, it was also the same. So these loosely translated, but not really good slogans, they, they weren't hitting the mark. So now in 1972, sheer driving pleasure It was adopted on an international level and got straight to the point in all of the languages. And for our U.S. and U.K. podcast listeners who might need some clarification, the only exception to the rules was, you guessed it, the U.S. (laughs) And now most recently, the U.K., where BMW advertises its cars as the ultimate driving machine. Which... I must admit, it's not too bad. No, that's a good one, too, actually, isn't it? That's a good one, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nice. Mm -hmm. All right, so there you go. The history of the iconic BMW slogan, sheer driving pleasure. But is this the end of the story? Uh, What does the future hold for this strong slogan? Will it stand the test of time? Well, Jonathan, it is a great question, but there's no need to worry just yet. The use of marketing slogans is definitely changing. I mean, Mm. look at all the digital formats we have nowadays. And as technology adapts, of course, so do consumers and marketing needs do have the finger on the pulse of all things that are new. But, you know, with a slogan like sheer driving pleasure, it's so good that I'm pretty sure it's staying around for a while. Yeah, I have the same feeling too. I mean, I don't know, think about it. Even with like e-mobility and autonomous driving on the rise, those features, they actually add to the emotion of sheer driving pleasure. Mm -hmm. Joy, it's universal, right? Yeah, of course. And, And, you know, the more that the technology evolves and becomes more efficient with cars, I mean, continuing to add to that universal joy of being behind the wheel of a BMW, I mean, I think it's sticking around for a while. I agree, Jonathan. I agree. All right, then. Thanks so much for listening to this week's episode of Changing Lanes. And if you did love this episode as much as we loved making it, (laughs) do make sure you subscribe to our podcast for future episodes. And to dive deeper into all things BMW, head on over to BMW.com to learn more. My name is Sarah. And I'm Jonathan. And this has been Changing Lanes. See you next time. 